Hello, my name is Jason Albrich, and uh, I'm a senior product manager here at SOR. And I want to welcome you to the latest in our web training series. With today's presentation, I'm excited to let you in on a new option for the uh, popular 1500 series level and flow series product line. This new switch um, specifically addresses the new growing need for products designed to meet the needs of today's low power industrial environment. So kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit today, I'm uh, going to hit on the background, kind of a background story to this introduction, to this uh, problem, uh, the solution, what we're doing to meet the challenge, uh, how to specify when to use, and uh, just a few things at the end, uh, things to remember. So as far as background goes, um, most of you probably know there's there's been a shift uh, occurring in most of our primary industries for, for quite some time now to use uh, lower input power for all instrumentation. Uh, this approach saves operators money by reducing power consumption and uh, really it fits many modern instrumentation specifications such as transmitters uh, very well. Um, unfortunately this isn't really a, um, a natural fit for many of the hard contact switches that, that we uh, or our competitors really use on their mechanical based products. So again in this background we want to kind of show where this solution came from. So as with most solutions, they're kind of started with problems. And uh, so these problems were first brought to us by our local representative. Again, um, you, our reps, are our best conduit to the customer and uh, to the good information that, that they have. So uh, we appreciate that information whenever you can pass it on. In this case, um, because of you know highly detailed quality records, you know we can actually trace this back to a specific um, rep and customer complaint, and uh, at the time it seemed to be a, a random problem. You know, on, we get those you know periodically, but and a replacement switch mechanism was sent out and under warranty, and it seemed to solve the problem. Uh, customer replaced the switch, and everything was good for a while, and until they had another problem, and then you know a little bit later, even another problem. Um, over this time, we did begin to see another very, very few customers um, across the globe, quite frankly, with similar problems. So even though our return rate was actually only 0.05% uh, because of this issue, we, we went ahead and formed a task to look into these problems. So after a brief data gathering period, the primary symptom was found to be inconsistent electrical operation. Um, pretty tough to, to get some of this information back from, again, across the globe and, and get any kind of consistency from it. Uh, but we also have found that when a customer reported a bad switch, it really wasn't always bad under, under all conditions. Uh, for instance, different systems or applications would uh, yield different results within the same customer. Um, switch capsules could sometimes be removed uh, momentarily and then would, would work when reinstalled. Um, switch capsules could even be sometimes swapped with another bad one. Uh, in fact, you know, exchanging two bad ones, and then both would magically work once again. Um, so it was kind of a tough one to, to nail down, uh, specifically because several solutions kind of seemed to work, um, but they ultimately didn't work out in the long term. Uh, you know, we'd find brief success with one remedy, only to have it not work the next time around. Uh, there was a lot of potential solutions and workarounds that were tried. Uh, I already mentioned the switching of capsules. Uh, we even had some customers changing magnets or increasing strength uh, was another solution that seemed viable for a, for a short time but ultimately proved not to yield consistent results. We also tried reorienting the switch capsule to be more directly in line with the magnetic field um, and that one didn't, didn't end up panning out either. So in the end, you know, a, a root cause was found um, the, the common thread was uh, was there after we were able to gather enough information. You know, the fact that this issue was uh, so statistically small made it pretty difficult to make a definitive conclusion. Um, but we did find that, that all of these symptoms were almost always accompanied by a, a high electrical resistance. Uh, this led us to obviously suspect contact corrosion from, from low wattage power supply. So we dug into it just a little bit deeper and found that, yes, each customer was indeed using this product in what we considered to be you know, low power applications. So 
our next step was to was to uh, you know find out the actual minimum power ratings for the switch that we use. Um, minimums had never really been an issue before since uh, the vast majority of failures were due to overpowering the switch. So we went to the manufacturers to find these things out. Uh, the problem we ran into was that the manufacturers were really just as uncertain about their minimum ratings as, as we were. Uh, this was a new issue to them as well. And they had no published specifications about minimum power. In fact, many hadn't even tested for low power. Um, so the manufacturers that had done testing were also just, just as hesitant to give us those absolute minimum ratings. Their tests showed that uh, minimum power testing would never give them consistent results, and absolute minimums were spread over a really wide range and varied from unit to unit and even test to test, and that made them pretty hesitant to make a, a definitive uh, specification. So SOR, really, we did our own testing. Um, this testing confirmed much of what the manufacturers had said. Uh, we, were, we also saw that, that wide range of minimums, uh, but we were able to combine our collective knowledge to uh, confirm that the low input power was indeed the, the, the root cause here. So then we, uh, we worked with our vendors to, to find a viable option and some quantifiable rating. And what we ended up with uh, was a rhodium-based switch that was able to give us the same temperature performance as the old switch, but with extremely low contact resistance, uh, even at low current services. And uh, we were we felt very fortunate to uh, to find this this switch and able to keep all those specifications that we that we had before. So we then were able to uh, build up a few units and ship them out to the uh, the same customer who actually first brought us the issue. And this new low power switch was able to solve 100% of their of their previous problem. So after this and and all the previous lab testing that we had done, we were really confident that we found a legitimate solution. Uh, we also concluded that, that these conditions, you know, aren't really unique to this customer. Uh, again, this is an industry trend to use lower and lower input power. And it was very likely that, that, that other people have experienced or will experience similar problems as these, as these input powers at industrial facilities continue to go down. So in the end, we decided to make the switch option a permanent addition to our catalog. So how to specify this new option? Uh, new option designators have been introduced. So in order to order this new switch option, all you have to do is replace the W with an L in the switch option portion of the model number. For example, if you normally order a W1 SPDT switch, you might consider an L1 low power SPDT switch. Again, the W1 is an SPDT, L1 is an SPDT, L9 the SBSB and the W9 was the SBSB as well. So when to do this, you'll find that uh, the ratings are given in the catalog, but in short, if you can remember this, this will always work out for you. The L switches are for DC applications only. So after that, anything under a total power of 25 watts, we recommend that you go ahead and consider using the, the L switch. And anything under 3 watts is going to be a mandatory application for the L switch. So if you have customers that are that have been prior users of the 1500 product and they've been using a W9 or a W1 and their, their input power is below 25, um, you want to go ahead and try to encourage them to move over to the L switch. I think in the end it will end up working uh, better for them. Uh, but if it's under 3, then that's going to be a mandatory uh, switch that uh, you know once you call up customer service and you tell them your specification if it's under three they're they're going to demand that you move to the l9 or the l1 uh, just so that the performance can can keep up so some things to remember list price list price is going to be the exact same for the traditional switches or the low power switch option so again trying to make things a little bit easy for those who have to transition over uh, speaking of easy, the agency listings, all of the agency listings are available. Same listings are available for the L that they are for the, the W switches. So you just go ahead and use the exact same accessory designators. And replacement switch capsules, they are offered just as normal. The part numbers are available in the literature. Uh, however, you got to remember when you're using those replacement switches that they 
cannot be used to replace agency approved units that previously had the W9 or W1 uh, switches in there. That will render the tagging incorrect and that uh, technically nullifies the agency listing. Now the, uh, the new spare parts do fit in uh, the same way that the old ones did. So the, w, the L9 can go physically into a unit that has a W9. However, that does, again, nullify the agency listing and it means that your tagging information will be incorrect. So if you need to, uh, if you need to switch over to, to an L switch and you still need to maintain agencies, you probably need to uh, contact customer service and uh, order a complete unit for the first time and then we can go ahead and order spares after that with no problem. So some additional resources that are out there, they'd be out there on the rep side of the website. You can always find up-to-date literature and information on the website. Here's a list of related catalogs and other items you might find helpful uh, regarding the 1500 series family of level products, level and flow products. So you've got catalogs there. Brochures, that brochure, that's the, the uh, all-in-one catalog brochure for the 1500 series. Uh, there is a product bulletin out there that kind of explains the same things that we've gone over here, some of the technicalities of the switchover. And then there is an application sheet that we've made up from some of the people that we've been able to help with this low power option. If you have any questions or if you want to uh, place an order or need any other kind of assistance, as always, feel free to contact your SOR customer service representative. Uh, most, all of them, I believe, are, are listed right here on the page, and uh, most of you probably already have uh, them on speed dial. So once again, I want to thank you for listening in to this, uh, this presentation. I uh, hope it was informative, and we hope to talk to you again real soon.